All right, guys, what is going on? Lux here from the MD Journey, helping you succeed on your medical journey with less stress. I have a question for you. Are you a pre-med or a first or second year medical student struggling on balancing multiple classes at once? If you said yes, I totally get it. I used to be in your shoes. And in this video, I'm gonna give you my top five tips on how to balance multiple classes at the same time. So we're gonna to get to those tips after this intro. All right, guys, welcome to today's video. Um, if you are new to this channel, I like to quickly introduce myself. My name is Laksh. I am a fourth year medical student applying to internal medicine here in the United States. And I have been helping uh, both pre-meds and medical students for the last two and a half years through the MD journey, where I've been sharing tips through my successes and my failures to help your experience become a little less stressful. So if that message resonates with you, make sure that, you know, obviously first you like this video and two, you join the community by subscribing to our growing subscriber list. So let's get into the video, which is how do you balance multiple classes at the same time? You know, typical for a first uh, or second year medical student or a pre-med in college where you have a lot of classes and you're not really sure how to dedicate your time. So I'm going to give you my five tips that really helped me um, kind of overcome that challenge. And so tip number one is more of a, a you know reminder versus a tip, which is you need to perfect your study system. Often when I coach students on doing better in medical school, and we try to evaluate how they're studying, we realize that there's a lot of room for improvement and sometimes just minor improvements here or there, taking things out that they're doing that really isn't adding any results can free up a lot of time, which they can then use to better balance their classes. So you need to perfect your study system. So if you think that you're not, first of all, getting the results you want, you have to ask yourself, you know, are you doing techniques that aren't getting you the, the results? Are you doing techniques just because you think uh, that's what's gonna be working? Obviously they're not. So you need to kind of learn how to tinker or just readjust um, your study system. If you do want some examples on how to do the study methods that worked for pre-meds as well as med students, uh, time in and time out, I'll link down below in the description a blog post I've written about the five proven study methods um, that worked uh, for medical students and hopefully you can find a study method there for you. If you want to see how I study then uh, I actually share with you a free step-by-step -step video course on exactly how I study to be a straight-A student in medical school and so I'll link that down below in the description. Again it's a free video course so if you're struggling on finding your technique maybe my strategies will help you out a little bit so check that out uh, in the link in the description down below. Um, but regardless if you choose to follow some of my techniques or you think that yours is good enough make sure you keep tinkering with it because then you'll free some more time up to use the rest of the tips in the video. So tip number two is using the 180 approach. Now if you know you're trying to balance a lot of classes your typical approach is going to be to go to the class or read the syllabus and then come home and review and be as efficient as possible. Now the worst case scenario is when we come home and we're still not sure what's important. We have tons of information and we're really not sure how to parse through the info. So use the 180 approach to help you understand what's important. And basically what the 180 approach is, is to use a high yield resource, uh, whether that be online or be a review book, and learn the high yield stuff first before going to class. So certain resources that I love using in medical school are things like Online MedEd, uh, Picmonic, you know, both of those will be linked down below as well with a discount if you guys wanna check them out. Um, but you use those resources um, and you find the video or the lectures um, text that corresponds to what you're about to learn in class. Then you go to class and you listen for similarities. What do you hear in your high yield resource that you also heard in lecture? Clearly, if you hear it in both, that means it's important and you should remember it for the test. Now I take it to a second level and I watch the high yield resource and I read the text again because then it helps me solidify on what's important and I can spend the rest of the time on the details that are really gonna make the difference between a C and a B or a B to A student. So try the 180 approach, try the sandwich method if you really do struggle with understanding what's important because this whole approach is gonna help you identify you know, common themes and common topics that show up in your high yield as well as, for, as well as your lectures. So tip number three is to use the concept of batching. So batching is something that's often used by media um, influencers, things like people that do blogs, things that are YouTube, you know, people like me. And it's a way to do multiple things and be efficient in making sure everything is getting done. It's also perfect for medical students and, and pre-meds in college. The way batching works is you assign either a whole day or a specific time 
um, throughout your week for a specific class. So it could be, you know, if you're a first year med student, it could be Monday mornings, I'm gonna focus three hours on anatomy. Uh, Monday evening, I'm gonna focus on biochem. And you just kind of split time accordingly because then you know you have dedicated time for each class versus saying, I'm going to just sit down and then try to do all my work and realize, you know, shoot, I didn't get to my biochem homework today because anatomy took forever. Um, use batching in that way because you can help visualize on a calendar how and where you're going to do specific tasks and which class you're going to assign yourself to. So tip number four is kind of following up on the idea of batching is to use the concept of work hours. So use work hours. And if you don't know what work hours is, is a technique that I teach uh, in one of the videos down below where I explain how to be productive uh, in medical school, but also as pre-med. Work hours are basically segmented time that you put into your calendar at the start of the week before you plan anything. And these are times that you know you're gonna be working, but you're just not exactly sure what it's gonna be, and that's fine. So you may know that you have two hours Wednesday morning before class to get to work, and then you may have another three hour chunk here, and another two hour chunk there. You basically, on your Google Calendar or your physical calendar, start to block off time that you know you're gonna be working, and take it to another level and saying, okay, you know, these two hours, um, in Thursday morning, I'm gonna to dedicate to anatomy and I'm going to uh, allow it only to be anatomy. There's no biochem, there's no uh, physiology, whatever it may be. So use your work hours to where then you can segment those uh, bigger hours into smaller tasks. So for your biochem class, you may have to read two to three lectures before uh, class. So you can dedicate your work hour for biochem and then break them into smaller tasks for biochem. And maybe the first hour of your work hour, maybe to read lecture one and then, you know, lecture two and lecture three, so on. So then you can see not only does Thursday morning uh, is dedicated to biochem, but you can see Thursday morning, the first hour is dedicated to lecture one, then lecture two and lecture three. You can start to see how realistic your schedule is, your study plan is, if you use the concept of batching and work hours together. And finally, tip number five is to go in a reverse direction where you put your weaknesses first. So sometimes the more flawed study systems that I've seen are things where they try to give an equal time to all the classes. But if you're worse in anatomy than you are in biochem, obviously you need to be spending more time in anatomy. And so again, continuing a concept of work hours and batching, if you can start to visualize what hours of the week you're going to dedicate to studying and then start to uh, dedicate more of those time to studying uh, for those classes that you struggle with, you can start to feel that you're no, it's not necessarily struggling with the balance because the classes that really give you the most trouble are getting the most attention. And the classes that you're really good at, you know, if you're good at pathology, you don't have to spend as much time and it's okay to find that balance. It doesn't have to be a clear, you know, if you have five classes, you don't have to be spending 20% of your time on each of them. You can start to change that percentage to give more time to the classes you struggle with, less time to the classes that you do well on. And if you combine all these tips, guys, of making sure you have the good study system you're using batching, maybe the 180 approach if you struggle with understanding what's important. I think that you're going to do a much better job of balancing your courses. It's going to be a little bit less stressful. But if you guys have more questions or if you have a specific example of how you're struggling, make sure you comment down below. I'd be happy to answer them in the future videos. Um, but if you did enjoy this video, make sure, first of all, you give it a like and subscribe to the channel and join our community. Um, but I'm happy to help you guys in whatever questions you have. So make sure you comment down below and I will see you guys in the next video. So take care, my friends.